<clears throat> okay, hello again, everyone. Okay, I hope everyone is having a good time in the summit. And please, if you can hear me back, please say hello back through the comment so I know that someone is on the other side. Okay, hello, Lahman Tiamayu. Thank you. Uh, can you guys um, see my screen? Okay, nice. So welcome to our chatbot, to our workshop, uh, building the next chatbot solution. So, uh, okay, nice, nice. I've seen <laughs> Benjamin, hello, I've seen now. Okay, um, so let's start. Uh, a little bit of instruction. Uh, uh, today's workshop will be facilitated by two people. Uh, the, the one that is speaking to you right now is, uh, my name is Nyamosi, and the other person that will join on the session, on this session later is Wazili, as you can see his picture there. So, um, I want to tell you also a little bit about Betro, the company that I'm working with. Uh, so Betro is an, uh, conversation AI company based in, in Tanzania that is dealing with developing chatbots for businesses. So we are on a mission of trying to transform the future of conversation AI uh, in Africa. And we want to see the effect that we, it will bring to people on the way they are interacting with consumer and enterprise application by creating a uh, uh, more efficient and personalized experience, experience through these uh, business services. So uh, that's a little bit brief about Metro. And uh, let's touch. Uh, right now, I'm going to take you through the agenda of this workshop. And uh, today, <clears throat> we'll be focusing on uh, how do you know that uh, you need chatbot solution. And then uh, we also see uh, like things that will be, you will need to consider and stuff that can help you in making the right decision if whether your company should have a chatbot solution or not. And uh, another part that was you will take it uh, and we take you through is chatbot building journey. So here you see like, the whole process from the idea to the final production of the chatbot. <clears throat> okay, so let's begin. And yeah, uh, so does my company need a chatbot? So that is an important question that any company uh, which is conscious in improving their business services should ask themselves. So as of uh, a little bit of statistic. As of 2019, there are more than 300,000 chatbots on Facebook Messenger. So uh, you can see all these number of Facebook. It's a very, very huge number, 300,000. And, and uh, hello, 300,000 uh, chatbots. So you can see that they, they can be like uh, a lot of businesses who have adopted chatbot in their services. And I agree with you that that can be a little bit of confusing, like should you also, uh, your company also have a chatbot or not? So together today we will try to see if we can help reduce the, some of the confusion and that you'll be able to decide whether or not to, to, to adopt chatbot. So through, through this uh, workshop, I'm going to take you with on the simple real life example that can be um, can be like uh, be a witness of how different companies have used their chatbot in uh, uh, helping their customer attain uh, business attain their services uh, in a simple and very accessible way. So uh, to start with. There is this bank in here in, in Tanzania called ABSA. So they wanted to change their way of customer interact with the bank, their bank services. So uh, 
they wanted to provide some way of a self-service channel that their customer will enjoy and and uh, uh, be able to get services, bank services like cash withdrawal, deposit money, or ask for a balance or any other bank services that user uh, that their customer come into the bank to to, to be served. So in doing so they were able to achieve their goal by uh, building a chatbot called Abby. So as you can see here uh, on, <clears throat> on your right of the screen, there is a screenshot of Abby having conversation with the customer. Yeah, oh, I don't know, uh, I can't see the, the many right, but he, it's a conversation of Abby with a customer who is trying to, to, to assist him or her. So with this chatbot, uh, Absa Bank were able to provide an instant support to their customer, uh, provide a personalized experience to their customers, and because and and other bank services on their on their customers' fingertips. So let's jump see another example of how company have uh, incorporated chatbots and have benefited from it. So there's this Safaricom, it's a telecom company in Kenya. Uh, they wanted to uh, make their services more personalized, easy, easily accessible, and to be available all the time. So uh, in, in doing so, they, they decided to build a chatbot called Zuri. <clears throat> so as you can see here, uh, there's a young lady waving at you. This is is an image of Zuri. Uh, so Zuri uh, is able to be helpful to the people who are getting service from Safaricom uh, in different uh, in different way. Uh, she can help you with uh, voucher recharge, data plan choices, and mobile money transfer. Yeah, and all those kind of stuff that uh, you you might use on the telecom company services. So. Uh, uh, so a little bit of uh, information about Safaricom. Uh, they started deploying Zuri uh, into uh, Telegram and Facebook at first. So the, their customer were interacting with Zuri through this social media platform. And then uh, later on, they shifted into WhatsApp. So I think uh, uh, everybody knows WhatsApp and uh, WhatsApp is Ever, almost everyone, everyone in East Africa has what's happened using it uh, most frequently on the day. So this was uh, like uh, a move that can can be seen as uh, you, you you follow user interest into their apps or or mobile application that they spending more time in. So as as we keep on going, we come to realize that this is also one of the things that you can consider like knowing your part, your, your customers, where are they spending most of their time? So, uh, so we have seen these two example and you will be able to realize that there's a certain pattern from this, from those two examples. For example, uh, both, of exam both of the companies have goals, uh, did have goals like what they wanted to achieve uh, what they wanted, uh, they, they, they wanted to achieve, and both of the of this company wanted to simplify uh, their customers uh, while they are uh, getting their services. And also, they also wanted to improve their business. So they, uh, in trying to achieve these these goals, is where they uh, uh, they ended to develop uh, a chatbot that can can attain them. So. Uh, n now I want to to tell you about things that might help you in making the right decision for your company to whether they should have chatbot or not. So uh, here you can see like there is something that is very important that you should very 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 be clear of at the beginning before you decided whether you should have a chatbot or not. And that is uh, what value does the chatbot bring? So you can see, for example, from the 
uh, Absa Bank, they wanted to be a, a self-service channel that user can get an instant response and, and support from the chatbot. Also, you can have like uh, personalized communication. You can have like uh, availability. All of these things is what the chatbot can do for you. So you have to recognize them as uh, as a value that can be brought by having a chatbot. So another thing is, um, will a chatbot chip in your business? So uh, one thing is uh, we, you, you want to, to build a chatbot that can simplify things and not complicated things. For example, if uh, from, from the beginning you are saving a customer maybe using two minutes, but if you incorporate a chatbot, maybe you will use less time than that. Maybe uh, before having a chatbot, you are available only on working hours for customer support. But once you incorporate chatbot, maybe your availability on customer support will be like 24 seven. So you should be able to realize that, uh, will this chatbot uh, chip in my business process? Hello? Uh, can everybody, uh, can everyone see my screen? I can see a screen. Oh, okay. I, can see I can see. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me share it again. I think it's kind of stop here. So how about that? Is everyone seeing my presentation? Okay, nice. <clears throat> so let's let's continue. Uh, so another thing is, once you have realized if the chatbot uh, can chip in or your business and can simplify some of the process of your business, uh, another thing that you should be able to consider is like. Uh, can you closely maintain your chatbot after it, it has been launched? So you see, uh, well, maintenance is very important in making uh, the chatbot continuous, give the best experience and provide relevant response to your customers. So you should be able to uh, to make a, a, a plans for, for it, for it to be maintained. And as they say that, it's better to have no chatbot than to have a bad chatbot because bad chatbot give bad satisfaction and bad satisfaction give a uh, bad experience. So no one will ever come back to the chatbot again because it's, it's no good experience out of that. So yeah, the, the another thing is uh, maintain your chatbot after, after it's been launched. So uh, another thing is, uh, that you should, is very, very important is know your target group. So one thing you could be asking, are your customers age of 15 to 35, are they adult women, are they adult men, or are they old people? Because research says, shows that uh, people of age 15 to 35 are likely to chat with the chatbot than older people. So you should be aware of, uh, the 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 target group that you are dealing with are they uh, are they are they likely to interact with the chatbot and if or not maybe what should you do maybe to make them uh more engaged with the with the chatbot so all of these are things that can be very very helpful in in determine maybe whether you should have a chatbot and if you you should have a chatbot how should it uh, be is it should be should it be uh, more engaging? Should it be uh, less cool? Maybe yeah. All of that, all of those stuff can be very helpful on on deciding whether you should have a chatbot or not. So another thing is, uh, so do you have a team or a backup plan that can help a chatbot? Because not all the time a chatbot will understand the question come from the user. 
So sometimes you might find uh, Chantput uh, faced a complicated question and wanted, uh, doesn't know what to respond. So that is the time where your team should budge in and uh, take it from there. You say the handoff, where the chatbot doesn't understand, then it hands to the human. So you should have like, not necessarily think of a team, but have a backup, backup plan. Once that happens, what will you do? So yeah, there's that also. And another thing is, uh, are you prepared to adhere to your privacy law? So one thing about this is like, they differ from country to country, but uh, once your chatbot is, uh, is, is correcting some personal information from your customer, you should very, very be careful on uh, implementing these private laws. The one that I can say, I can talk about is the uh, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation from UK. That is also one of example of uh, data protection that you can think of incorporating if your chatbot that you, if your chatbot at a certain point will be correcting personal information from the, from the users. And then one last thing is, uh, do you have patience? So think of a chatbot as a baby, a newborn baby. Uh, and the baby always, they take time to learn, they take time to work. So a chatbot is also the same way. It is going, it's going to take time for it to uh, be uh, on its own, to be uh, asked to, to be able to answer the question that uh, user ask uh, relevantly. So you should have a uh, patient on it and uh, continuously giving it uh, some information, some data for it to understand and to be able to learn collectively what it should be doing. So yeah, uh, as you can see, so these are some of the stuff that uh, when you, you take it to consideration, they will help you to understand like, uh, is this chatbot the right time for my company? Is, is the chatbot the right thing for my company right now or not? So uh, in summary, to, to conclude what we have discussed, discussed on the first part is like, uh, you should be able to consider the value of the chatbot that is bringing on your business. And then you should be able to, to observe and uh, uh, know that uh, will it uh, simplify your business process having a chatbot and also can you closely maintain your chatbot after it's been launched or oh, and another thing is you should know your target group and uh, really understand uh, uh, how can you use chatbot to approach them and another thing is have a backup plan when uh, the chatbot doesn't understand what to respond. And yeah, and the last one is having uh, data protection when your chatbot is collecting some personal information. So there you have it, guys. I hope you, uh, this uh, first part will like uh, give you some awareness and like help you in making uh, a proper decision whether you should have a chatbot or not for your company. So for the next part, that is uh, building your uh, chatbot, building chatbot journey, I will welcome Wazili to take it from there and see you the journey that uh, a chatbot it has from starting from the idea stage to the production stage. Praise Wazili, uh, welcome. Well uh, thank you so much for that first part of our workshop. Uh, if anyone can hear me, can you please type on the comment section below so that I could... Well, hello, everyone. Uh, if you can see me or if you can see my screen, can you please type on the comment section here so that I could know that there are people here listening to me. I can see a man here and Angus and Benjamin. If you're there, can you please type anything on comment section, please? Mm, nobody? 
Can you hear me, guys? I'm pretty new to this platform, so I'm not sure if you can hear me out. Uh, they can hear you. All right. Thank you. So, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening at any part you are in the world. Uh, I hope you are all keeping safe. And thank you for attending our workshop on building your next chatbot solution. My name is Oziri. I'm a CTO at Beltro, a company that we uh, have this vision of transforming the conversation AI in Africa, like working from uh, Kiswahili, our national language, our mother language in here, and scaling to other languages in Africa, uh, Uganda, Zulu, Wolof, and there are many other languages that uh, we are speaking here in Africa. So, as you could have heard from my colleague, Nyamos, you probably now have a glimpse of what a chatbot is and what a chatbot is capable of doing from being able to answer repeated general questions from your customers to guiding or fully supporting them as they interact with your, your business. So the question that I guess you might have right now is how do I build a chatbot in my organization? How do I build a chatbot for my business? How can I support my customers by using a chatbot? So, all right, welcome to the second part of our workshop, chatbot building journey where I'll tell you the phases that we are going through in building a chatbot for businesses. So a bit of story, a couple of months ago, we worked with a client who wanted a chatbot for supporting attendees on their annual event. It has a couple of functionalities, uh, database query operations and searching functionalities. So as we go through this chatbot building journey, I might make references to this work. So just keep that in mind. So, okay, let's get started with the phases. So the very first phase in developing a chatbot uh, here at Betro is the project startup, or we can call it uh, discovery phase. Uh, in this phase, we focus more on understanding our clients' needs. What are their business objectives? What are they trying to achieve? What are the key business issues that they want the chatbot to solve? So are they building a chatbot for providing quick answers to customers? Or are they building a chatbot uh, to solve customer complaints? Or are they building a chatbot for making reservations? Or are they building a chatbot for paying bills? Or are they building a chatbot that perform a couple of tasks on their day-to-day -day business activities? So this project startup phase, we actually do this in order to determine the scope and objectives of the, of the project. So right here, we do a couple of uh, interviews with our uh, the stakeholder, we're going to do interview with you, trying to understand your business objectives. What are the new, what are the needs? Let me continue. So as I said, by the end of the project startup, we are expecting to understand what the goal uh, that you want to achieve and the solution that you want the chatbot to solve. So by the end, we'll be having a good understanding of the requirement and what role does this chatbot play with your organization? like uh, you're creating a chatbot for entertainment or providing full customer support. So, but also we wish to know what the messaging platform or the channel that you would like the chatbot to be deployed on. Uh, like, do you want a chatbot uh, to be deployed on your uh, business website or you want a chatbot to be deployed on your WhatsApp account number or a chatbot on uh, Telegram or Facebook Messenger? It is also important uh, for us to have a team of people from both sides our side and your side. Uh, from your side, a person that we can contact during the whole project uh, lifetime. So after the startup phase, then we move on to the planning phase, the point at which uh, we're converting the idea, the brilliant idea you have into a testable deliverable. Uh, being it by creating a prototype or creating a proof of concept. So some of the things we consider here uh, uh, we, we start with uh, the chatbot functions, establish key metrics, and uh, conversation design process. So, so after we analyze the requirement we collected from your business, we come up with uh, chatbot functions. These define the tasks that the chatbot will do. 
So referring back to the event management story that I told you from the client, the client wanted uh, wanted uh, their chatbot to be able to, to provide a, a daily schedule whenever attendee asked for them. Uh, they also wanted the chatbot to be able to provide uh, a list of speakers of the whole event or of a specific session, depending on what uh, an attendee is asking. Also, they wanted uh, attendee to be guided from their home to the event. Benita, I am from I am at home, so it, uh, it, it should be able to give them a direction from where I am to the event location. So during planning phase, we also de uh, define the metrics for us and for, for your team to assess the progress of development, but also uh, the metrics uh, we will use to assess the final, the final, final product. So as for the core part of the chatbot, what should be the entity classification accuracy? What about the entity extraction accuracy? And how about the response time of the chatbot? Have the users interact with it? All these metrics are really important in our process in order to build a successful yet helpful and engaging chatbot experience. Uh, once we are done with the metrics, we move on to the conversational design process, another process in planning phase. So conversation design is for creating experiences that enable computers to communicate with people. Uh, you know, people have already developed a way of communicating uh, since thousands of years back. But computers communicate in binaries. So conversation design helps in providing a seamless communication between the chatbot and the users. So this is the key part. Conversation design is the key part in building conversation AI projects. What you see on my screen are the steps that we go through in trying to provide a better communication between your chatbot and users. So we start with identifying what kind of users will be interacting with your chatbot. What are their personalities? What is their age group? And things like, what are their motivation? This all helps to get a picture of how they will interact with the chatbot. What their feelings will be. This takes us into the second step in creating the persona based on the user group we identified. We then go to define the use case for designing a conversation flow. We design conversation flow based on the chat uh, on the chatbot functions that we define below. What we do here, we start with simple dialogue. We test, iterate, and then we go for longer dialogues when we are uh, pretty uh, sure that this is kind of good dialogue that a user can have and be uh, helped for whatever he has. So all these steps are important as it's obvious we know that when doing conversation design, we know that you have to keep in mind that users are going to say things we didn't expect. We often in our team play bot and person on designing dialogue, trying to understand how these conversations will go. The better it feels for us when we're doing conversation, when playing the bot and person, the better the conversation it feels, we expect that this chatbot will provide a better experience when a user is interacting with it. But the question is, why is conversation design important in our process? There are two things to consider in here. First, the chatbot perspective, and second, user's perspective. So we know the chatbot work with entities, intent, context, and variables, but to users, they need empathy when interacting with your business. They want you to be helpful whenever they face some issues with your services. But also, they want you to be engaging when you talk to them. As you know, the good the service is, the happier the customer. So how are we bringing these two perspectives bounded in one thing? That is where we use conversation design processing, bringing together the user side and technology capabilities in one chatbot. So after the uh, planning phase, what's next? We go on to the technology phase. Uh, here's where we convert the design into a, 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 a testable thing, a product that uh, you can interact with. The core component that we consider here is conversation AI, uh, backend system integrations, and uh, messaging platforms configuration. With conversation AI, a uh, set of technology that make it possible for computers to communicate with people. 
uh, we consider three things in here from dialogue management, natural language processing, and natural language understanding. So with natural language processing, it helps us to, it helps the computer to understand what the user says. As the NLP is helping processing text and formatting it in a way that a computer can understand. We know that a computer can understand binary zero and one, but how do we make words being understandable by the computer? So example of task that we've been doing by natural language processing is tokenization. Tokenization, uh, assume we have a longer sentence. So from that sentence, breaking that sentence into a bunch of words, then converting those words into, into numerals, the number that a computer can understand. Then we go to natural language understanding. Uh, a, a component of natural language processing that uh, enable computer to extract the meaning from the sentence. There are two uh, components to consider. You know, computers don't understand language as human can understand. We have a sophisticated means of communication. But how do we at least try to make computers understand what we say? There are two components in here, entity classification and entity extraction. So entity classification is an NLE component for understanding the user's language. Understanding that whenever say, when a person say, for instance, would you mind asking who Sydney is? The chatbot, this intent classification uh, part enabled the chatbot to understand that this user is intending to ask, to ask a speaker's profile. That's the uh, sole purpose of the intent classification. Understanding this, uh, this, this message falls under this class. It's intending to ask a speaker's profile. But after intent classification, what next is entity extraction, the part of NLU that enable the uh, chatbot to extract information from user's message. For instance, from this message, would you mind asking who Sydney is? Entity extractor, it helps in extracting this variable speaker's name, of which from this sentence is Sydney. So would you mind asking who the speaking person is, right? Because I didn't provide who is the speaking person. The chatbot, the best option is to ask, who are you asking for? Probably, if I don't have access to the information of the speakers who are speaking currently. Then you can ask me, okay, what's here is speaking? So the entity extraction company should be able to extract the variable zero from the message the user has uh, the input to the chatbot. So after the conversation AI part, what's next is a backend system integrations. There are two things to consider here, the APIs or databases and human agent. Oftentimes, a chatbot can ask a user for any information. It inserts it into the database or the, after inserting the query, the, the, the chatbot can query the database using the given user variables as they have been uh, extracted by the, the entity extractor part of NLU. So for instance, if the user asks for a particular speaker's profile, after extracting the variable, then we take the variable, we go to query, whether to we query the speaker profiles, whether from the database or by making API calls. Then the response is sent back to the user who asked that question in a specific channel that he asked. If he did ask on Messenger, then the, uh, then uh, that response will be sent to the same person on Messenger. If on WhatsApp, then it should be sent back to WhatsApp to that particular number. Then on backend system integrations, human agent. As we said before, it's pretty hard to predict what we user will say. Oftentimes, we don't know what the user will say, and they will always say things we never expected. So. Whenever a chatbot fails to understand what the user is looking for, the option might be to ask if they would like to be routed to a human agent who can help them to solve that problem. So in building a chatbot, there should be that mechanism to route messages that a uh, chatbot failed to answer to be routed to a human agent who will assist the chatbot, uh, the user on your business. The other thing in, this message in, uh, in technology phase is messaging platform configuration. You know, this depend on the agreement between, uh, between us, the chatbot developers, 
the company developing the chatbot in your side for your business. So if we agree to develop websites on, to, uh, I mean, a chatbot to be deployed on your, on your uh, business website or to be deployed on your business account number on WhatsApp or Messenger or Telegram, the channel that of your option that uh, most of the users are interacting with your business. So after the technology phase, what's next is uh, pilot and launching phase. At this point, you know, we have that good and understand, uh, we have already developed the chatbot, we did some testing on our own, then, then we do some uh, uh, pre-pilot and review, trying to review the user stories, what are the, what are the requirement, like what was required for us to do, uh, go back to the uh, chatbot functions, then take each user case, did we do this correctly, what should we change? And uh, Yeah, then we go to testing, trying to test with the other, other people outside the development team, get their feedback, then get back to fixing deficiencies, wherever we miss something, then uh, fix the deficiencies, then we're ready to launch. Uh, after the pilot and launching phase, then it's project to wrap up. We're here, we're pretty sure that the product is uh, working well and ready, already tested, so it's going to be deployed. So at this phase, we do some documentation on what we have done and doing uh, training sessions to uh, business officials, like how this set was going to help your, your users. Uh, the other thing that I didn't write here, uh, which depend on, uh, on the agreement between us and, and your business, like whether to continue with maintaining the chatbot or that should be the end of, uh, of, uh, of the project. But it's very, very good to keep on maintaining the chatbot as users keep on interacting with the chatbot to increase the, uh, uh, improving its help in, in, in increasing the, the, the experiences whenever the users in, in interact with your business. So a bit of a process recap on what we are doing in chatbot building journey. We start from our project startup, then where we understand your requirements uh, a little bit well, then we get to planning phase, uh, doing uh, uh, from chatbot function, then doing conversation design process. After that, we go to the core of chatbot, uh, the technology phase uh, using conversation AI, uh, conversation AI, then uh, after that we go to pilot and launching phase, then we wrap up the, the project. So the question is, where do I start? We are open on our uh, social platforms. Uh, we get a uh, business email there. You can go to our website. You can find on, on Twitter, LinkedIn, or Medium with this uh, Beltro name so let's see uh we can continue this discussion on social media platforms uh you can chat with Yamosi, you can chat with me waziri on the right you can also chat with anybody anyone you find having the title their drop on social media or right here on the summit so thank you guys if you get any question can you write it on q a session then we're happy to answer your question or you must forget anything to add, you're welcome. Yeah, okay, Waziri, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, I, I happen to go through the Q&A section, but I haven't seen any question. So maybe if you have any question right there from this workshop, please uh, uh, just drop it down there on the Q&A section or maybe comment section and then we'll be happy to answer you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I've seen a lot of them say this. The workshop was nice. Thank you. Any question or any comment at all? That would be nice. It's also be pretty good to continue this discussion on social media. Be free to connect with each of us on social platforms. <laughs>